Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Dorothy. I'm a professional astrologer. You can find me on the web at nhastrologer.com and also on Facebook, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer. Today I want to talk about the month of June and this is for those of you who are Sagittarius <clears throat> or have Sagittarius rising. So on June 2nd, that full moon is in your sign of Sagittarius, yay. This is in your solar first house, and so what it represents is, is you out to the world. You are illuminated out in the world. Full moon in Sag is very fiery and very emotional, but Sagittarius rising is fun-loving, very energetic. So this is a very energetic time of the month for you, the time of the year, truly. It's your opposite sign. The sun is in your opposite sign. The moon, as it's full, is not. So this represents an essence of yourself. You're at your halfway point in the year. This is an essence of yourself, and this is a really good thing for you to focus in on. What do you need to let go of that you've kind of been working and hanging on to since uh, six months ago when the sun was in your sign? All right, so this is a special little piece for you, Sag. So work this piece, work this full moon on June 2nd so you really can release things that aren't truly who you are and then just go play and have some fun. All right, you guys know how to do that. Whether it's going to school and learning something new or traveling, whatever you love. Uh, sports are in there too. <laughs> have some fun with sports. Now I want to go into June 5th on June 5th. Uh, uh, Venus, there we go, moves into the sign of Leo, also a fire sign. That's in your ninth house. In your ninth house, you rule the ninth house, Sag. It's your ruling house. And so Venus is in, in Leo is all about creativity and really expressing ourselves, where we, what we value, what we're passionate about. And when it's in that ninth house, that ninth house represents um, publishing and foreign cultures and traveling so again there's this opportunity for you to travel this month if, the, if that's something that you've been thinking about I would encourage you to look into it at this point that Venus in Leo is so creative and it's just so much fun it's a bit flamboyant but that's all right it's so much fun that just you, you want to create and play and share that with others and this is what you can do with Venus moving through Leo in your ninth house Jupiter has been in that sector for a long time, almost a year now, and with it moving through that ninth house too, it naturally rules that area because it's your ruling planet, Sag. And so, you know, even education, higher education is something that can be coming up for you. So whether you're traveling to learn or learning so you can go travel, whatever it is, work these pieces. They're really, they're set up for perfection for you guys this month. Now, a little bit of a pain in the rear end here is that Mercury has been retrograde since May 18th. On June 11th, it is stationary. Kind of a dead day on that day. Kind of be really quiet, hard to move forward on that day. But it goes forward right after that. So on June 11th, it's stationary to direct. It's in your relationship sector, that seventh house of partnerships. And so over the last three months, there's been some issues going on with your partners. And, you know, you're just going to be able to clear them up, whatever they happen to be. Whatever is going on under the surface, that retrograde of Mercury is always about going within first, and then later we get to share. So while it was retrograde through the month of May and early June, we are we just contemplating and thinking about things, us and our partners. And once it starts to move forward, June 11th and then June 12th, and then on June 16th, we have a new moon in that same sector in Gemini. So by June 16th, you're going to be able to set new goals and really see what it is that your relationships and partnerships are all about. And where you felt stuck, you'll be able to move forward and free yourself up from whatever was kind of holding you back in your partnerships. Okay? So we have the whole month of June on, you know, from the time that it goes direct on for it, it's retracing its steps that we'll be able to really have a good time and really communicate well with those we love, with our partners, even business partners will be able to communicate really well. So it's opportunity for you to create that for yourself, good communication. June 21st, the sun does enter the sign of cancer, and that's just in your solar eighth house. So feeling, caring, and nurturing, but that is going through some sort of transition at this point in time, because cancer in that eighth house 
is a water sign in a water house so there's a lot of emotion going on what the summer will bring for you um, will will change things for you you know it's usually a time of year where you do go through some sort of deeper transition whether it's just so you can get away and have time away to regroup it's typically what we can do with this energy that's a great opportunity for you to do that or even through meditation and contemplation for a month or so more than usual not for a full month unless you'd love to go to an ashram and just meditate for 30 days you're more than welcome to do that too that will be a very transformative thing for you to do so whatever you like to do that's transformational that eighth house place go ahead and work that once the sun moves into the sign of cancer on the summer solstice june 21st anyways who wouldn't want to go spend a, a, a month at a beach somewhere i know i would anyways thank you very much Please come and find me on the web at nhastrologer.com for your own personalized sessions. I do personal readings over the phone and Skype, so you can come find me there for your information. All right, thank you for watching. Blessed be. Namaste.